YouTube, it's your boy Dan, aka A Drive, and greetings, Poke fans. Michael here, and we are bringing you guys the first ever Pokemon Sun and Moon Randomizer Shiny Race Nuzlocke, a brand new playthrough where me and Michael here are going to be teaming up in the Alola region just one final time before Ultra Sun and Moon racing each other for some awesome shinies on Twitch.tv and just having a blast in general. What's going on, man? I'm super excited for this playthrough, dude. <laughs> I am too. This is this is my first ever co-op let's play, and I think it's a very exciting one to start off with. We got the the shiny king here, Mr. Dan, aka A Drive, and we've got me. So it's, it's gonna be great. It's it's gonna be amazing, dude. We have an all-star lineup here, and we've got some really special surprises for you guys for this let's play. So let's jump into it, man. Let's hit that. Uh, I'm gonna play in English. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna play um, in English. <laughs> I was considering Viva la Espanol, but I think English is probably the safer bet. That would actually be really funny to watch you play this in, uh, in a different language, but we're gonna yeah. stick to it. So as you guys may or may not know, this game is gonna be randomized. So what that means is our starter Pokemon is randomized, sort of. The Pokemon that we encounter in the wild is gonna be randomized. The trainer Pokemon, the trial Pokemon, everything is gonna be randomized, but a nice little plot twist here. I don't know if you even know this, Michael, but we have different randomizers so my game is gonna be different than Michael's game so it gives two totally unique perspectives on the screen at the same time I think that's gonna be pretty cool yeah definitely I mean that's like that's like twice the randomization double the like, randomization. I don't know if that's proper math but that's something. <laughs> I'll take it, man. I'll take it. But there's also some nice little plot twists in here as well. We are playing through a unique version of Alola, an alternative universe of Alola. I'm kind of just going to skip through Kukui's cutscene here. But I'm playing through an alternative universe of Alola where some of the shiny Pokemon are a little bit different than what you normally expect. So don't be uh, don't be surprised if Heracross is no longer pink slash purple and maybe it's something else. I don't know, but my good friend Uncle Chris has been on the job and uh, he's got some really cool, amazing things happening here in Alola that neither myself nor Michael have seen. That's that's true. And I'm, I'm excited to see it. You know, okay, you may already know this, but I learned a very interesting fact a little while ago and that was prior to, I think, Gen 6, Shinies were determined by an algorithm. Did you know that? So, what do you mean by so they were determined originally by their DVs or now called IVs in like Generation Two and stuff? Um, and then I, I don't know what you mean further. So, though. so I mean like what color the shiny was was determined by oh. like a palette algorithm. Like that's why there's so many blue Pokemon that turn pink. That um, makes a lot then, of sense. Okay. Yeah, but then, and that's why in XD and Coliseum, the shinies look so different than they do in, like, the main series games. It's because the 3D palette, they use the same algorithm, but the palette's different because they're 3D models. Mind blown. Thanks for throwing the knowledge this way, man. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, and then I think I Gen 6, I think Gen 6 is when they started, like, intentionally designing the shinies. Um, did I spell my name right? Yes, I did. Um, and, so, <laughs> and so, like, that's why, like, I, I'm excited to see the custom shinies for, especially the older Pokemon, because, like, you know, they're probably going to be a lot more, there's going to be more cool ones. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think they're going to be really, really awesome. And a couple other rules. We're going to kind of talk through this episode with some of the rules. we got a little bit of, a little bit of housekeeping to do here. But before we get too far through this cutscene, because I know we've seen it, Michael and I are very excited to let you guys know that we're doing a Nintendo Switch giveaway to kick off the hype of this series, guys. So if you want to win a Nintendo Switch, this one right here, like it's brand new in a box. If you want to win this Nintendo Switch, all you got to do is you got to like the video on me and Michael's channel. Check out the description below because there's a link to Gleam.io, which is like a giveaway link. All you have to do is subscribe to me and Michael to enter after hitting the like button on both videos. And then you can enter through a couple other ways to get more entries. Following on Twitter, subscribing on Twitter, following on, or I'm sorry, following on Twitter, subscribing on Twitch, following on Twitch. Those will get you extra entries, and you got a couple weeks until we pick our winner. So just a little thank you guys for the support on this series, and a little extra way for you guys to get a Nintendo Switch if you don't have one yet, or if you have one, you want a second one. I don't know. It's going to be a random <laughs> winner, so whatever. Just enter. It's it's easy. It's free to enter. You might as well do it. So show some love for both me and Michael, because this is going to be a lot of fun. And obviously, this episode is going up on both of our channels, but from this point forward, we're going to be alternating channels, so I believe we'll do the even episodes on my channel and the odd episodes on Mike's channel. So yep. that's going to be the plan there. We're going to try to get you guys four or five episodes a week because we have uh, we have not a lot of time before Ultra Sun and Moon, but we'll do our best. And things could get we slightly will. thrown off by shiny races, so just keep that in mind. 
But hopefully the shiny luck for both of us is just incredibly exquisite. And so all the shiny races are done in like 20 minutes. That's the plan, yes. Uh, we do, I do want to mention this as well for transparency purposes. Uh, Uncle Chris did build in a shiny charm for us. Uh, we're not going to get shinies in two encounters, but we will have a little bit higher of an odds. The shiny charm gets you the one in 1365 odds, so three times the chance to find a shiny. That'll definitely help us out, and it's just going to save us a little bit of time, especially at the beginning of the game where we're going to be doing a lot of random encounters, um, whereas towards the middle, late of the game, we're probably doing the SOS method to find the majority of our shiny Pokemon. Yep. So, one other thing that I think is really critical to talk about is the fact that these shiny races are more than just a race to get the shiny. There's actually some special rules that kind of go along with these shiny races. So, uh, I do want to kind of touch on those really quickly. Uh, the first thing, just kind of running through the rules, and again, I will put all this in the description for you guys, but uh, basically it's a standard Nuzlocke, so Pokemon, uh, you catch the first Pokemon you encounter, essentially, um, unless it's random encounters at the beginning. Um, those Pokemon each get three lives, because we're only catching eight Shinies throughout the playthrough, so those Pokemon get three lives. Uh, it just makes it a little easier, because there's only 24 lives total. Um, we're going to catch eight Shiny Pokemon, like I said, pretty much one before each trial. The first trial will be a little weird. We'll probably catch two before the first trial, just to kind of spread out the team a little bit. The races will be happening on our Twitch channels, also in the description below, and you'll follow them by doing the little giveaway for the Nintendo Switch, so check that out. Uh, and then the winner of the race gets a really cool prize. Uh, we've decided that two of the four rewards uh, the winner gets. So let's say me and Michael race, and, and Michael wins the race and gets a shiny Meowth, as we see a Meowth on the ground here. He gets a shiny Meowth. He can then choose two of four rewards for that Meowth, one of which, or the four rewards are TM usage for that Pokemon, held item usage for that Pokemon, including Z Crystals, and un, uh, max refresh hearts, so Pokemon refresh, five hearts, or an extra life giving them four lives. So you got two of those four benefits that you get to choose if you win the shiny race. If you don't win, you get nada, squat. So that's how that's gonna go. Sweet. That's a lot of stuff, man. That's a lot of stuff. What, uh, we got, we got a question of the day too. I guess we'll throw that in there. Uh, what shiny oh, Pokemon yeah. are you guys most excited to see on this playthrough. I don't know, man. What's your favorite shiny, Mike? Like, what do you what do you want to see? Because we, we might get some different shinies. Some of them are different, not all of them, but some of them that, are different. That's true. Uh, my favorite shiny um, is, I think it's a tie between Gigalith and Minior. Dude, Gigalith is an amazing shiny. I yeah. love the blue on it. That's really cool. Do you have both of them? I, I, I have a Minior that Jubilee, like, got off the GTS that is like, 100% hacked. But I have a <laughs> Rog and Rolla that I have yet to evolve. Ah, it was like the first Pokemon I shiny hunted on Twitch a couple months ago. Um, so I do have them, kind of. Well, if you never ever need a trustworthy trade partner to evolve it, I got your back, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> anytime, man. Anytime. So how many times have you played through Pokemon Sun and Moon? Like, uh, is this going to be your second playthrough, third playthrough? This is my third, because I did the original, the first one, and then I did a Moon Wonderlock on my channel uh, right after I finished the normal playthrough. Uh, but I haven't played through since. So it's been a, it's been like since January since I've played through the game, so. And you haven't I, randomized it, I'm assuming. No, no, I've never done oh, that before. Boy. We are we are in for a treat, guys. Uh, randomizers, yeah. <laughs> anything can happen, man. I don't even know what to expect. Uh, my most recent randomizer had some really crazy things happen in it, and uh, Uncle Chris was uh, was to blame for that. So we'll see if Uncle Chris has any secrets in store for us in this playthrough too. I don't know. We'll, well, I guess we'll find out. Uncle Chris just seems like so. So this I don't personally know Uncle Chris, but he just seems like this mysterious mystery man. You know he what is. I mean? Because I don't know who this guy is, and it's like, you know, he has created such a magnificent world for us. Who, what does he do? You know, who is this man? He secretly works for Nintendo, but Nintendo doesn't know that he works for them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 a really interesting situation where Uncle Chris works for Nintendo, and he's my uncle who works for Nintendo. Um, okay, and he, I got gotcha. you. He gives me all the secrets, but he doesn't like Nintendo doesn't acknowledge the fact that he works for them. He just works for them. It's it's an interesting um, interesting situation. Okay, that may that's extremely logical. <laughs> I 
All right. I, just, I just picked up my clothes, man. I'm ready to go. And uh, we'll this be able to- This is the box, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. we'll be able to get our starter Pokemon here pretty soon. Obviously, a little bit of cutscenes at the beginning, guys, but we wanted to use this episode to kind of give you guys just a general idea of the rules and stuff. And we are not going to be using our starter for, like, shiny purposes. So we're not going to be using a shiny starter. It's not going to count. Our starter is actually repurposed for something else, which you guys will see here pretty soon. We have a special starter that Uncle Chris put in there for us. It's a I'm special very excited. starter. It's a special starter, man. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So I see you've been doing a lot of the uh, like the Ultra Sun and Moon kind of theory videos regarding like the different forms and stuff. I gotta oh, yeah? ask, man, like what is the one Alola Pokemon like you definitely definitely want for Ultra oh, Sun and Moon? Uh, probably Gliscor. Um, Dude. Dude, I gotta tell you, man, I was just talking to my friend last night about Gliscor, and you gotta give me your idea for it. But I had this idea that Gligar evolves in the daytime, and it turn if you evolve it in the daytime in Sun and Moon, or Ultra Sun and Moon, it becomes a Lolan Gliscor, and it's fairy and ground type. And it's oh, like- Oh, whoa. I thought that was such, I had that idea yesterday. I was talking to my friend, uh, and, and, and we were like, oh my God, this is a great idea. <laughs> that, that would be cool. I did it. My, my idea was that it like, um, it, you know, because the, what is it? The, the desert, the, it starts with an H. I can't remember the name of the desert. Um, but it like, you know, Gligar and Gliscor go there because they, they're, they're scorpions. They like the desert. Um, and then they like find their way over to like the the geothermal power plant like at Blush Mountain because it's like right nearby, um, and so like being around all the electric type Pokemon there makes them electric flying type. Okay. And so I it's made a, a uh, I made a video like I did my like top ten Alola forms I most want to see a couple months ago, and I like put like black lightning bolts on their faces that like, and I just thought that looked really cool. <laughs> that actually sounds really cool though. Like I'm just so hopeful. I don't want to be, I'm like cautiously optimistic, I think is the way I want to put it, that yeah. we're going to get new Alolan forms. I think getting those two new Ultra Beasts like open the door for so many possibilities. It's like the first time they've ever introduced new Pokemon in like the middle of a generation, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And I like, while those Ultra Beasts, like for me personally, I'm like, Eh, you know, like I don't really like them that much. I like what their potential means. <laughs> yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah, so I, I'm assuming like that's not the end. I think like last year they learned that they just like released way too much information. So I think they're going with a different approach this year. I, I don't, yeah. like I said, cautiously optimistic, but there's like all the chance in the world that we not only get new Alolan forms, but we get new Pokemon in general. Like aside from the Ultra Beast, like we could potentially get like just brand new regular Dex Pokemon. I feel like Which that's actually absolutely a possibility. nuts. <laughs> it really would be, and it would add so much more hype to Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon that I think otherwise, like a lot of people are, like people are hyped about Ultra Sun and Moon. I definitely am. Um, but yeah, I think for adding, sure. adding that in could make such a huge deal. Like I'm a big fan of Sun and Moon. I think it's a great game. Um, I think a lot of people their gripe with it is like cutscenes and things like that, and like the beginning can tend to be a little bit, a little bit rough at times, but. I am really confident that Ultra Sun and Moon is gonna be better because they every time they've done like a remake or like a version two of a game, they've always figured out a way to just like step it up and make the game like even more awesome than it was, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. It's like, I mean, I think the, the best example of the, you know, remake f quotes, third version was uh, Black 2 and White 2. Like those, those are fantastic, you know, because I really like that they added a whole bunch of new areas, but they also, like, changed the story and just, like, the progression of things quite a bit. So I'm hoping they do that in Ultra Sun and Moon. Like, they change the, like, you know, where you go first and, like, there's new trials and, like, stuff like that. That's what I'm I'm really hoping for. Because even if we don't get new Alola forms, like, these two new Ultra Beasts, like, the only new Pokemon we get, you know, if the story is drastically different... I'm gonna enjoy playing it because I'm gonna get interested in that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you brought up a good point about black and black and white too. Like, you, the starting town is like totally different, and they like repurpose Charon and and I think Bianco is her name. Um, was that her name? Uh, the one with the glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they like kind of totally repurposed like what they were in the game and like made him a gym leader and like she's the professor's assistant and like helps you out get your first Pokemon and you start at a different place. And then there's like 
you get the normal gym first and then whereas like in black and white it's like a totally different progression through the map at least in the beginning of the game and i think that enough is like enough but we haven't seen much of the game like i think mantine's gonna be a ride pokemon <laughs> i'm excited oh about yeah that. yeah we saw that in the trailer i think that's gonna be really cool uh you know what i hope they do with mantine it's like you know you press a button and he just like lets you like jump out of the the water and glide for like a ridiculously long amount of time oh that'd be kind of cool yeah because you know mantine you know it like leaps out of the water it's like water flying because it's like gliding through the air like if you could do that you're just like you know instead of like like instead of sharpedo breaking rocks you use mantine to jump over them see i was thinking i think that's sick i was thinking mantine would be more like the dive pokemon because we didn't have dive in sudden move. Oh, that'd be interesting. I didn't think about that either. So Mantine, like you strap on a Mantine and it allows you to dive underwater. Um, and then that could like allow you to explore like totally different areas. Like imagine if they put like a full blown like coral reef for Mantine to dive on. Like I feel oh, like- Oh, that would be awesome. Be so I didn't sick. think about that. That would be so sick. And they could add new Pokemon that way too by like introducing them like Corsola obviously, but they could like add new Pokemon into that area because it's like a totally unexplored area of Alola. Like there's yeah. so many possibilities. So I feel like like this game cannot be ruled out yet like there's so many possibilities for what ultra sun and moon can be and like how awesome the game can be so i'm really excited about it like we're, we're counting yeah, down me too. here we got less than two months so speaking of speaking of new games another thing i'm excited to do is um play through gold and silver on the virtual console because i've never played through those games before wow so so you didn't start uh pokemon when red and blue came out then right yeah i started with ruby ruby and sapphire oh man so and you're so, in for like, a treat then yeah yeah because i i mean i've played through johto before but i've only played through it once and that was when soul silver came out when i was a sophomore in high school and so like i'm excited to play through games i've never played before but also a region i haven't played through in years that's exciting yeah. That's that's yeah. a, like so I'm I'm like excited about the gold and silver on virtual console. I'm not as excited simply because I like I prefer Heart Gold Soul Silver. So like I love Heart Gold Soul Silver. I just played yeah. through it like maybe two months ago. So I love 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 that game. But I'm definitely gonna play gold and silver on the virtual console. And there's some really cool ways to get shinies in that game. I don't know if you're familiar with how it works, but. Um, it's like there's increased chances if you're breathing and one of the parents is shiny, right? Yeah, because the shinies are based on the DVs or the um, like the IVs they're called now. I don't remember what DV stands for, but um, because it's based on that and like if you breed with a shiny, that shiny obviously had the right DVs, so you're passing those down. So like you grab that red Gyarados and you throw it in the in the in the daycare and breed it with other Pokemon in the water group and the dragon group or whatever, and you can get some pretty. It's I think one in sixty four chance. One in 64? Yeah, it's something like that, dude. It's insane. Holy crap. <laughs> it's absolutely insane, like, how, how easy it is if you do it that way. And I, in Crystal, they did it this way. I don't think it's in Gold and Silver, but in Crystal, uh, the Japanese version of Crystal, the egg that you get from the daycare man, which had, like, Magby, Elekid, uh, Smoochum in it, uh, it was, like, a really, really high chance to be shiny. In the American version of the game, I think it was still, like, one less than one in the 100 but I don't know if that was in gold and silver. I don't think it was, but you can still breed with the shiny parents. So, and if you get a shiny ditto, oh my God, it's over. Oh my God. You breed for Wait, everything. So the ditto thing works? I thought the ditto thing wasn't introduced till gen three. What? Like ditto being able to breed with any Pokemon. I thought that wasn't introduced till gen three. Am I wrong? Oh, I, I would imagine it, it was, it had to have been gen two. I'm assuming, cause I'm thinking about gen two and like just how it's set up. And like you find ditto right outside of the daycare. So. I would oh, you do? Yeah, oh, okay. but maybe it only works with Pokemon that can't breed with anything else, you know, like Voltorb. Maybe, I don't yeah. Know. I don't know. That's a good point, but I'm, I I'm sure someone will tell us in the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So, uh, I see we met Kahuna Hala here, and we're just skipping through the dialogue, guys. Like, we'll eventually do some of the dialogue, but uh, a lot of this is just the entry scene. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. Um, yeah. But we are going to be picking our starter here, and I do want to let you guys know that the starters are randomized except for one of them. One of the starters is not randomized, uh, and we're going to be picking that one. And the starter will not be used in the playthrough. It's simply uh, just for us to be able to shiny hunt for. So, like, like shiny hunt in the future. So, it's basically, if you guys are familiar with the harvest hunting method, where you use, like, an executor or a trevenant with harvest as its ability, it's got skill swap, um, and you usually give it a level berry, swap it, and it makes the SOS method easier. That's actually what our starter is. So our starter was customized in a way to allow us to do that. So um, 
I know, I know what my starter is, and I think I know what your starter is gonna be, but after this, we don't know anything. Like, this is it. This is the only part I know, uh, and this is just added into the game just so we can have a little easier time shot enhancing, but again, this Pokemon won't be used. So it looks like I have the Dragon-type Dragonite, Bug-type Mothum, and Fighting-type Girder. So uh, I know I'm supposed to take my Mothum here, because it's it's my little mascot. And oh, I got Trico! <laughs> yes! So there oh, you go. Oh, that's epic! <laughs> so Trico's gonna be Dodrio and Blaziken are my other two. I think Trico is probably the one you're meant to grab. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Gra uh, it lined up with, with Rowlet. Like, grass grass starter and grass starter. That is glorious. That works out really well. So now you get your Trico, and these Pokemon, like I said, will not be used through regular playthrough. Once we get our first shiny, it's only used to help us catch shinies and find shinies in the future. That's really the plan. And we just did a few little things like that to try to like help us along the process. Uh, Cause SOS in this game, if you don't have like Lepaberries, if you don't have skill swap harvest, if you don't have that kind of stuff, it just tends to be like unnecessarily tedious comparative to having this at your disposal. Yeah. So, and soft resetting for a shiny right now, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Yeah, no, no thank you. <laughs> not, not worth, not worth. <laughs> no, this I tried it. I did like a thousand resets for Rowlet on 3DSs, and I just couldn't do it anymore. You average, uh, if you're doing 3DSs, you average uh, three encounters. Uh, what is it? So I think it's it's three minutes per encounter or something like that, or something like that. I don't know. It's ridiculous. You get three encounters per three minutes. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So there's uh, Luck, the, the non-shiny Motham, just the regular Motham. So I get I get him off him, and I think I think he's very strong. I think he's actually gonna be a little stronger than than the normal normal starter Pokemon. But again, it's just to help us out. So are you nicknaming your Trico? Yeah. What are you naming him? I'm naming him Blade after Blade. the uh, the first Trico I ever owned ever in a game. I remember I said my first game was Ruby. Trico is my starter. I was gonna. I was just gonna say, is Trico like one of your favorites because of that? And that yeah. it, it all kind of connected there. It all kind of. Dude, I gotta say, Sceptile is pretty baller. I got, he's like definitely a really awesome design. I think. Yeah, I I obviously agree. But I also think just in general, the Hoenn starters, like as a whole, are the best, like, coolest generation of starters. I like, I'm a Gen Oneer, but I tend to say that they're probably the second best in my mind. So yeah, I, I was I was gonna say Gen One is the second best. So it's like you know we're we're pretty close because like Sceptile, obviously my favorite Pokemon. Blaziken is so cool, and I think Swampert is just like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so just so you guys know, I'll have you check too, because just to make sure it should be good. But here's my Motham here. It's got Full Swipe, Hypnosis, Bug Buzz, and Skill Swap with Harvest and a a, a very generous Lepaberry that it's working with, and it is actually sitting at level 100. Uh, how's your Trico doing? Is he is he buffed up as well? Uh, yep, he's got, uh, ooh, a special attack raising nature. Ooh, but Leaf Blade, bummer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's got, uh, yeah, same thing. Leaf Blade, False Swipe, Skill Swap Hypnosis, Harvest with a Lepa Berry. I'm gonna make him do something. Ha ha, he attacked you. Very nice, so we've got our <laughs> starter Pokemon. And we'll be using those to shiny hunt. And we gotta take on How here really quickly. And then I think we just have the little miniature tutorial on how to catch a Pokemon. And that is pretty much where we're gonna wrap up for the first episode, guys. But um, we are gonna be Wait. doing the first live stream pretty much right away, um, assuming our schedules align properly. The first live stream will actually be happening the same day this video is going up, and we're gonna be doing a multi-twitch together on our respective Twitch channels, uh, racing each other for our first shiny Pokemon, which is gonna be awesome. And then once we both get that shiny, um, oh, I think I have to actually battle how I was like trying to run away from him. Uh, once we both get our shiny Pokemon, then we will begin episode two and continue the Let's Play um, and kind of go from there. So, like I said, we're gonna try to do five episodes a week uh, as best as we can. We're both like super, <laughs> I get to face Ace Arola, <laughs> Elite Four How. Wait, Foresh oh, that's randomized? <laughs> yeah, uh, foreshadowing for Ultra Sun and Moon apparently. I'm curious to see what yours is gonna be. So now the fun starts because everything is randomized and again, both me and Michael's games are gonna be different. So I don't know, I'm, I'm like looking to see what his his battle against how is gonna be. Obviously this is a, a an easy battle because I just, you know, click one button, but um, you just you just knock it out in one shot. But I'm curious to see what it is. I, not if I click false swipe, oh mine's my, I'm challenged by twins, how and how, and there's only one twin. <laughs> I got, you gotta love that. I, I'm like, I really want to see what you find. A Delibird! A Delibird. In before Wonder Guard Delibird, and you can only, you can only hit it with, uh, 
<laughs> with Leaf Blade. <laughs> oh God. That would Are be... abilities randomized? Yeah, everything's randomized, man. Like move sets too? Yeah, move sets are uh, randomized. Abilities are randomized. Level up pool is oh well, same thing. Evolutions are not randomized though. Typing is not randomized. Okay. So we don't have to worry about typing, but move set is randomized. Yeah. And now wild Pokemon and trainer Pokemon can hold items. There's a lot of stuff, man. It's it's really random. One would I've say never played extreme. something this random before. <laughs> <laughs> One would say extreme, my friend, extreme. So, like I said, extreme. we're, <laughs> we're going to be kicking off this shoddy race on our live stream, and we'll be battling it out to see who's going to get the first shiny, and then whoever doesn't get the first shiny, we'll just have to continue shiny hunting so we can do the next episode kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, man, lots of good stuff going on. I Hopefully, uh, everything was pretty transparent about, like, all the rules and stuff. Again, it's all in the description, and I want to make sure you guys sign up for the Nintendo Switch, because that's... That's cool. Nintendo Switch, dude. Do you, you have you have a Switch, right? Yeah, you have a Switch. Of course you have a Switch. Heck yeah, I do. I pre-ordered that. Me too. And then, <laughs> and then I got it and it was amazing and then Jubilee didn't pre-order it. So we like had I still had to go to Toys R Us at like 7 a.m. on a Sunday that weekend to make sure we got one for her. <laughs> yeah, I I'm glad that I have one. I think it's an awesome console. And I was very, very glad that I was able to find one for this giveaway because they're kind of hard to find. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they can be tricky. Even now. Although I, mean, I went to a Target the other day and like they just had like three in stock just sitting there. Yeah, I, I like, think it's definitely hit and miss. I think now it's better. And I think as we get closer to the holidays, they're going to have get worse. way worse. Well, it'll be better and then worse. Yeah, I think it's going to like be better and then worse. So now's your chance if you don't have one and it's free to enter. So might as well. Might as well. It's good stuff. Good stuff, man. So there, I love how you have like a little rollet on the floor and it's like a Trico though. Yeah. <laughs> don't, t don't tell anyone, man. <laughs> it's a secret. The next day. Dun, dun, dun. This, this freaking like di dialogue choice. Why'd you pick that starter? Because it's cute or because it's cool. Well, that's great. Cause I think it's both cute and cool. <laughs> Why did you make me have this dialogue decision? Literally didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of this game, not really, but is the fact that she's got these boxes here that never get unpacked. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have one job, mom. <laughs> I think she's she's suffering from empty nest syndrome. Is that what it's called? Empty nest syndrome when her child is 10. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this kid, wow, he graduated early. Yeah, That's impressive. Gotta leave to explore the world of Pokemon. Yes, indeed a dandy. Man, I forgot how like much crap you have to go through at the beginning of these games like yes. the, the first like i think the first like two or three episodes are going to be much much button mashing for both of us guys but the randomness should keep it really fun um that's and, true and now once we step into the wild i'm going to learn how to catch a pokemon and from that point forward all the wild encounters all the trainers and everything will be a brand new extremely randomized adventure for our Pokemon Sun and Moon Randomizer Shiny Race Nuzlocke, which I think is pretty Woo! sweet. The longer the name, the better it is. That's, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's why, why, why do you think my channel name is what it is? It's not Mand JTV, it's M and JTV. You gotta have as many syllables as possible. Yeah, mine's just A Drive. I should change it though. A N D Rive TV. <laughs> Perfect. That is, that's how you, sold. I think I just like, I think my success on YouTube just like tripled, man. <laughs> <laughs> just instantly. <laughs> just just having to say that, it, it just is more successful. So uh, I think you're in the tutorial, I'm in the tutorial. Uh, this is pretty much where we need to wrap up. Uh, we don't really have to do anything else. We'll be keeping the suspense for the first Shiny race. So make sure you guys tune into our live stream. Both Mike and I will tweet it out and kind of give you guys a heads up once we have a concrete time in terms of when it's gonna be. I'm thinking it's gonna be the same day this goes up. Um, but at the very least, it'll be the following day, but it should be the same day. And just keep an eye on our Twitter, guys, uh, so you get all sorts of informed there. Make sure you guys subscribe to both channels. Uh, if you're from my A Drive Army, go check out Mike's channel, guys, please. That's part of getting the Nintendo Switch, but also that way you never miss an episode, because again, we're gonna be staggering the channels for the uploads, and uh, we should be good to go. So we'll leave, we'll leave the suspense here of what our shiny is gonna be for the live stream. So you guys can check that out. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm excited, man. I'm excited, I'm excited I think too. we're gonna have a good time, it's man. It's like, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen either, man, but I wanna thank you for joining me on this playthrough, man. I think we're gonna have an absolute blast and I'm excited for uh, for everyone to watch this. I think we're gonna have a, a really unique, one-of-a-kind experience through the Alola region and this will give us the hype we need leading up 
to Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon, my friend. Exact attackly, man. That's I'm it, so man. Hyped. I'm excited. I'll let you take us out, man. Yeah, any any final words before we wrap this episode up? Uh, I guess if you're watching this on my channel, you should subscribe to A Drive. <laughs> I haven't said that yet, but you kind of got to if you want to see the rest of this series because it's gonna be bang, 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 that kind of thing. So, and sign up for the Switch as A Drive is holding up on his screen. He's very tiny on mine. I can see him over here. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so should we should we just do our outros? How do we do this? Because we had two different outros. Uh, we say them at the exact same time, so that way the noise is just over each other, and it's super weird and awkward. Can we do that? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. Let's count down and then do it. <laughs> okay. Right. Three. So we'll do three, two, one, and then our outros. <laughs> okay. All right. You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Three. Three. Two. Two. One. One. All right, guys, all right, that's, that's all I have for now. Thanks so until next time, my Hands. name is Dan. I'll see you Gotta catch, catch them all. Peace.